dearest Hugh. Oh, I've had the most dreadful luck. I feel terrible that you've been left alone all this time. The traitorous Dr. Grey tried to steal the annular spectrum, a ring I developed to allow perception and alteration of color. Some call them impossible colors. <laughs> impossible for Dr. Grey, maybe. Anyway, something went wrong. I turned a strange shade and became invisible. The ring, it, it fractured, scattering coloured shards far and wide. I stayed at home for many weeks, watching, waiting, existing on this coloured plane. I couldn't speak to you, nor interact with anything in the mono world. So I left. I left for the university where I hid away the coloured tools I had created. I pray you have found what is left of the ring. beginning, we have pointed to the sky and declared it blue. It is this shared vision, this unquestioned understanding which connects us. But are you really seeing blue the same way I see it? Perhaps blue is nothing more than a shade of grey to you. Perhaps everyone in this world sees nothing but shades of grey. Don't you see, you? This, this is why we're here. enter a cave expecting a waterfall, the chances are your expectations will be met. But if you discard those expectations, don't you think instead the cave will be full of surprises? I ask for you, Hugh, to abandon your expectations, to pull me back from the brink of unreality. I need you to see the world not for what it is, but for what it can be.
did you know, Hugh? That purple is at the very end of the visible spectrum. It's the hardest colour for our eyes to distinguish. Now, imagine a shade one step further than purple. A colour beyond what we can actually perceive. We call these impossible colours. And I fear that this, this is where I currently reside. If reality is rooted in our perception, and you cannot perceive me, do I even exist to you? I'm sure that I do. I mean, you're reading this letter, or, or at least I hope you are. I'm sorry, but existing in this strange state of impermanence does funny things to you, Hugh. It makes you question what is real. The university gardens were bathed in an earthy orange light when I first met Dr. Gray. Summer had come and gone and a cold autumnal crispness had caught me off guard. I sat on the grass, surrounded by my books and papers, 
when a cool breeze threatened to blow my notes across the lawn. A page escaped my reach and took flight. A man not much older than myself chased after it, catching it on his third or, or fourth attempt. I remember his gentle smile when he returned it. He started talking and I was surprised that he had read my work in the university journal. He said he was a professor and that he hoped we could work together someday. It's funny, Hugh, how something so small can change so much. Dr. Gray soon became my assigned mentor, and I can't help but feel he somehow had a hand in it. Our fires burnt brightest when we worked together. It felt like we could achieve anything. We discovered more about colour than I could ever have imagined. We split light, mapped spectrums, we painted. We laughed. We worked long hours, and soon our goal became all-consuming. We were vessels. The work became more important than us, and we knew it. Ooh. 